Hi friend, David here from Learn Stage Lighting. And in this video, we're gonna look at a plethora of lighting consoles for the basic user. So when you need a basic lighting console, what do you look for? Let's dive in. Okay, so taking a little bit of a history lesson, it used to be, we'll move all this other stuff aside, that you went down to the music store and you picked up one of these, right? A basic fader-based console. I've even lost some of the fader caps here. And the way these guys work, just to show you a base level, is um, they still sell these today. We don't like them. Um, and the reason why we don't like them is because, boom, um, you got faders here, okay? And basically, you would expect that you would be able to select your lights. You go basically select between 12 lights here. So you can select whichever lights you want, move the faders. Oh yeah, yeah, I gotta look in the way I want, right? And then go ahead and hit a button to save it to one of the faders, right? And then you'd be able to go, most often you'd think, okay, I go and I hit, you know, Submaster, and now I've got all these faders I programmed with these different lighting scenes on them and I control the intensity with these faders, right? Wrong. These don't work that way. This one is the Chave Obey 40, uh, but every brand makes one, and you save scenes basically to these buttons. You can switch between them, and they're gonna jump. They don't fade. You can also make some chases. They can fade between chase steps, but ultimately, uh, for a lot of lighting setups, like pretty much anything, I mean, even when you're lighting a band, there are so many moments where you want it to fade between different scenes or cues and just jumping between them is cheap, tacky, and not that helpful. Not to mention, honestly, the way these things work and the fact that there's no labels, you don't know what channel is what based on what you're seeing, uh, makes these kind of antiquated and not all that helpful. Um, so, boom, throw that in the trash. Okay, um, so... More often than not, we don't recommend a fader-based console like that when we're talking about finding a basic lighting console. So what do we recommend? Well, the next thing to come is these guys kind of got antiquated. We're software. Okay, so this is an NTEC USB box. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of software out there. You pay for the software or maybe uh, you go buy a box and that box unlocks the software. You plug it in via USB or maybe network, and now you're in the PC and you're able to bring in lights and make them work and whatnot. And for a long time, this was, for most smaller venues, the best way to go. Because you could do so much more than these old fader-based consoles, um, but uh, the problem is, a lot of these softwares, due to the size of the lighting market, in particular the hobbyist lighting market, it's really small um, compared to the general music market is that meant that a lot of these pieces of software are buggy have issues are crashy um, lots of things there are lots of them that we really don't like here and we try not to mention them too much uh, just to be nice to people um, but the ones we do like um, do really work and so at the basic level we like Entex emu software um, which is a great software if you're running lights to music from stage that's what it's best at. And that could be via MIDI triggers, via VST plugin, um, and it's for one universe of lights or less. The other one we really like is LightKey. Mac-based software, so you gotta be on a Mac already. Um, if you have to buy a Mac, it's probably gonna be too expensive for you. Um, really easy to get started, but it can do quite a bit. Uh, it can do things at a pretty intermediate level. Um, you know, And so we like both of these a lot. They're, they're both really solid options. Um, there's a lot of bad software out there. <laughs> and so the software approach is really good if you want to do a lot of pre-programmed triggering. Like you have a backing track or you have electronic instruments and you want to assign certain parameters of your instruments or certain parts of your song to trigger certain lighting looks. That's a great way to get things done. And if you've heard of Entex DMX's software, which we've talked about a lot here in the past because it's really good, their EMU software is the follow-up to that, and it's a really good option for, like I said, bands, churches that are running stuff from stage where the worship leader's in control of the lighting, um, 
even smaller churches where you just want to be able to click between the different programs in emu and just get a nice fade between some different things and make it easy for somebody to walk up and without a lot of knowledge be able to adjust things in the lighting a light key is the same way for churches um, and for bands it tends to work well uh, the biggest difference between the two emu definitely a little bit easier for like simple grab a foot pedal punch through your presets um, whereas uh, light key is a little better if you're all DAW, like if you're Ableton or what have you, and you, you've lined up everything, uh, Light Key doesn't do foot pedal punch through presets all that well, okay? Um, but check out our review on Emu, check out our review on Light Key. We actually just updated our review on Emu, our review on Light Key is fairly recent as well, too, okay? But then there's new contenders in this space, and we love new contenders. So, here we have the WMX1 from ADJ, let's take a look at that. So this is a, a German lighting controller that ADJ is the U.S. distributor for called the Woof Mix W1, a good German sounding name. Uh, I have German in my blood, so, you know, I can say that. Uh, <laughs> and um, the Woof Mix W1, very simple, USB uh, B plug, that's a printer cable. Um, and in the box, you get a, a USB charger and the cable. Okay, so if we run this around the desk here, and we go ahead and plug it in. Watch this. Get ready for this. So, if you're starting this thing up from scratch, if it loses power during a gig, what have you. One, two. What was that? Two seconds? This thing started up? Yeah. So, what's cool about this, and we have videos that go into it more, is it's a really good controller for venues, for small production companies. For people that run sound, run sound for multiple bands and want to add some lighting. For DJs. And even for churches that have simpler needs for their lighting. Or uh, maybe are just always running things on the fly instead of triggering them. Which often isn't the best, uh, the best way to do things. But regardless, the WMX1 uh, really thrives in those environments where you're not pre-programmed. And you want someone to be able to walk up maybe with just a little bit of instruction from you and be able to start making things happen on lights and make it match the music and look good without a lot of work. Um, so we have other videos on this, but the basic gist is you get groups. There's eight groups, so four here, shift BPM gets you your second four. Um, you get an intensity control here at the top for each group, and you can also purchase a $50 add-on. You can bring in this old little fader console that I hate. And then these eight channels, and I think there's a ninth for a master, are going to control the dimmers of those lights. So you can have those side by side, okay, um, if you want, okay? So you basically have a home screen where you get some intensity and some flash buttons for them. And then for each group of lights, you have a color effect, a movement effect if it's capable, and a beam effect, which is typically like a zoom or an intensity thing as well. Okay, you can get all of those on the home screen, but you can also go in and from the second that you first patch lights, you just put them in, you literally just go up here to fixtures, you you go ahead and you add fixture, you go find it, you add it in, it's, it's really simple. Um, from the second you do that, okay, it's in here. So you go to color effects, and now you can start to build some color effects and you can select which lights are a part of it. You can start to build this effect. You say, okay, I like that effect. Now you can go to the preset page and you can save that preset. So you can just tap if it's blank or a shift tap actually, give it a name. And now you've saved those lights in that preset. And so you build up a bunch of presets with all the stuff you've saved. You name them real good. You can have multiple pages. And now you can just hand this off to somebody, you know, and say, hey, the band's playing. You know, it could be the band's, the lead singer's uh, spouse, or it could be, you know, your spouse. It could be a friend. It could be uh, a waiter or waitress at your venue. And you just show them, hey, here's where everything's labeled. You know, we've labeled it all here for you. This band's playing. We want something that's going to look a little bit better than sound active mode. And there can be an audio input from the soundboard to detect BPM. And then you can go ahead and they can just play different things, right? 
And if they start getting into it, it's real easy for them to learn, oh, how do I go in here and adjust, build my own effect of different types? You know, how do I do that, right? And they can select and they can build that and they can start building their own presets and they can go in here to color. Um, these are really cool because this isn't a tutorial on this, but you just go in here and you like, you go, oh, every other light, I just turn the knob for every other light. Now I have amber pink on every other light. It was that simple, okay? Um, same with positions. You save a bunch of positions in here. They can literally pop over here, run it on the fly, go back to their presets, dial in some presets. Then the uh, right side buttons, this button is everything open and, and strobing around like crazy. This is a strobe. This is a blinder. This doubles the speed of uh, the chases. This is a quick blackout. This is your fog or smoke machine. Done. Okay. And so we really do like these um, because there's no PC involved. Uh, you can connect to a PC to do some configuration and stuff. But in essence of actually running it, there's no PC involved. Okay. It boots up instantly. It's really easy to get up and go, just patch in the fixtures, and it pre-builds some stuff for you, a lot of stuff here on the left side. And then the right side stuff and the, the presets, you can go ahead and build your own stuff. And then last, the live edit page allows you to build little settings for DMX channels that aren't color position or gobo. Um, so really stinking cool because can it do everything? No. Is it for the person who's running things live from stage? No. But if you've looked at other setups, if you've looked at Emu and Light Key or these little fader based consoles and you just go to yourself, well, you know, that looks nice, but somebody has to set it all up. Or that looks nice, but I need a PC or I need a Mac. And, you know, people are just going to surf the web on it and whatever. You know, pro tip, don't just don't connect it to the Internet. But they will, right? And, and if you say, you know what, my needs are simple. I want cool lighting. I want it to fit the music. Then the WMX1 is another really great option there when you're choosing a basic lighting console. So to wrap it all up, we've kind of talked about three or four different basic type lighting consoles here today. And the point I want to drive home is there's no one basic lighting console for everyone. There's no one basic lighting console or software for every church, no matter what other YouTube channels say. Um, but, uh, you know, a lot, you can get a lot from thinking about and, and watching and, and just comparing these two and go, okay, Emu, really great. If you're running lights from stage, if you want it to be simple, or you want to play from a DAW. Light key, if you want to play from a DAW, trigger from an external source, or have somebody press buttons, that's a good option. WMX1, really great option if you just want to have your patch your stuff, have some basic programming already done for you right out of the box, and then you can hand this off to anyone. Lighting experience or not, I can hand it to my eight-year-old. Show him some basic stuff. And you know what? With a little musical acumen, he could be playing like a really sweet lighting show just by tapping between different presets and playing around with stuff and make something that is really fitting to the music and would take a bunch of setup time in those other lighting controllers. Uh, the downside to the Wolf Mix being that you're not going to be triggering this via MIDI you're not going to use that DAW to trigger it. That's not what it's designed to do. So, whoo, I hope this helps you. If you were thinking about basic lighting consoles, maybe you're seeing all these different software packages and little lighting consoles, and you're like, I don't know what's right for me. You know, we're the experts here. Um, we're constantly watching everything out there and picking out the best to represent here so that you can find the right choice in lighting control. If you have any questions about any of these consoles, if you find one and you say, hey, that one's for me and you're in the US, head over to Learn Stage Lighting Gear to get a hold of it. Uh, no matter which brand it is, if we recommend it, we'll get a hold of it uh, for you um, because ultimately we look across all the brands to make sure we're recommending the best stuff for you. Thanks so much for watching. If you are brand new to lighting and you just watched this, then grab my free guide to begin with lighting. It's going to help you determine what you need to get started and how to get moving fast, creating some awesome lighting. Until next time, we will see you guys later. Thanks so much for being here, and we'll see you on the next video if you're subscribed. Thanks.